Hey, what's going on guys? It's David here from Genzio. We are in Denver, Colorado for ETH Denver. I'm with Marcus from Witnet. We just spoke about, you know, the history of Witnet, the origin of the name, his journey, and uh, what's really to come for them. And also, you know, his thoughts on events and what they have coming up. Lovely team, great guys. Look forward to hearing what you guys think about it. Hey, what's going on guys? It's David here from Genzio. We are in Denver, Colorado for ETH Denver. I'm here with Marcus from Witnet. Marcus, how are you? Doing great. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely, brother. Um, you live in Denver, correct? I do, yeah. I grew up in Denver, lived in Denver for a long time. I think my first ETH Denver was in 2019. Uh, so I've been here every year, even like during the... Uh, yes, I live in Denver. <laughs> nice, man. Nice, nice, nice. So Witnet, uh, you know, I was exposed to Witnet through, uh, you know, our friend Ari and... Um, it's been fantastic to learn more about you guys, and I would like to hear a little bit more. So why don't you kind of explain us and uh, introduce us? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, WitNet is an oracle, and uh, the initial white paper was back in 2017. And maybe going a little bit further back, it's a spinoff of a company called Stampery. And Stampery uh, spun off several different companies with WitNet specifically, or with Stampery, it was trying to do like public notary on the blockchain. So it was actually using that, uh, that message field within a Bitcoin transaction to add a signature to notarize a document and have that on a blockchain, right? And to have uh, verifiable proof of something uh, that's kind of where Stampery evolved into an oracle, right? And verifiable proof of information. And yeah, so the initial white paper for Witnet was back in 2017. And uh, it's custom built in Rust. Uh, we run our own blockchain, our own layer one. In October 2020, we went live on mainnet. And since then, we've bridged to, I think now we're live on 28 or 29 different EVM compatible chains mm -hmm. where we bridge the, bridge the service. Um, and one of the nice things with uh, WitNet is it's completely permissionless and decentralized. So anyone can download uh, the software and run a node. Uh, anyone can participate in like this witness, seeing uh, this like crowdsourcing of information. Uh, on the data request side, like these operators who are using it in smart contracts can say, I want 10 nodes or 100 nodes to go out to these five websites and fetch this data and give me a result. And they go and do that. They have like a commitment phase. So they do like a commitment hash after everyone commits. They reveal. After they reveal, we can see who is in consensus and out of consensus. And you can say, out of those 10 nodes, I want like 7, 70% of them to agree or 51% consensus or something like that. If they're out of consensus, they're slashed, they lose some stake, they lose some reward. Or if they are in consensus, they agree with everyone else, yeah. that uh, then they're rewarded. And you can set that reward as the data requester on any one of these EVMs. Uh, so that's where it's, it's nice because we don't need to trust the operators of the who's operating the the Oracle network, we can say that they have an economic stake in the game, like skin in the game, and so there's then a, the incentive for them to act uh, truthfully, right? Um, yeah, and over the past, I think four or five years since we've been on mainnet, it's evolved quite a bit. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's been a great journey. No, it yeah, truly so, has. Sorry, been. I, I, no, 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 no. I love it. It, it truly has been a journey, and uh, quite a pioneer in yourself. So I think that actually, I'd like to ask you as well. You know, let's let's talk about your journey. You know, how you got your foot in the door. What what inspired you to kind of get going? Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, so initially, uh, yeah, I always enjoyed programming and and different things like that. And like I said, my first ETH Denver, I think, was in 2019. Mm -hmm. And that was shortly before WitNet went mainnet, right? So they, at that time, were doing an incentivized testnet uh, to get people to say, hey, we, we are in our testnet, we're about to go mainnet. And I was kind of like an Anon at that time, just an Anon community member, and I really loved uh, the project and really loved kind of the idea of WitNet and... Um, yeah, they had the position open for like developer relations, uh, business development. So I, I doxed myself and I joined, joined the team. 
Okay, nice, nice, nice. And yeah. from there, it was you just hit the ground running. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, okay. And, you know, inspiration-wise, what kind of, you know, has driven you? Yeah, I would say, um, like, the Cypherpunk Manifesto and, like, the Bitcoin white paper, uh, just kind of going back to that, like, what is what is money, the Federal Reserve, like, yeah. that, that old thing, you know, <laughs> Okay, nice, nice, nice. And now with Witnet, what has been able to separate you guys from other projects? Yeah, I th there's a lot of interesting uh, factors with that from, um, I like to typically separate it into a few different categories. One is uh, like business, right? Mm -hmm. So like from a business standpoint, uh, the cost of running these requests if you're operating on an EVM chain, the you're paying for the Oracle request in the native token for that chain. So if you're on Ethereum, you're paying in ETH, right? If you're on Polygon, you're paying in Paul or, or Matic or something like that, right? So you're paying in the token you're most bullish on, obviously you're operating on that chain. You don't need to buy like a separate coin to fulfill that request. So it's just like the ease of access. Yeah. Um, also, we can, or it's not just price feeds, it's also a general public or like a general service oracle. Um, so you could really query any data if it's on IPFS. Uh, you have some hosted data on IPFS. It could be some traits for an NFT that you're trying to randomize or something like that. Uh, it could be the weather, it could be obviously price feeds, right? Yeah. But just like the general purpose and that you can query any, any data, bytes, strings, numbers, like any, any public RPC mm -hmm. you can query um, is, is, is a great factor. Okay, okay. And that means it's a lot of uh, intricate stuff, right? Yeah. So <laughs> now for somebody that isn't a developer or isn't really into, you know, into this, but wants to get involved, right? Like how intuitive is it for somebody that may not have that much knowledge? Yeah, I would say it's pretty straightforward. Um, and there's tutorials out there. We have documentation on how to learn. And uh, even with smart contract developers, like if you're just dabbling and you're trying to maybe launch uh, Witnet powered smart contract or DAP or something that uses our general purpose Oracle or price feeds or randomness. Yeah, you know, we have like a wizard that will actually generate solidity code really? for you. Uh, yeah, so like uh, you can do like NPX install Witnet and it will install Witnet and you can do like Witnet wizard and then it will uh, like walk you through the steps and generate some some boilerplate code for you that you can just like plug it into your contracts. Really? Yeah, uh, yeah, and even you can do um, like NPX Witnet deploy, uh, and you can deploy on any one of the twenty eight chains that we're live on. Uh, it has the RPC connector built in there, so you could like deploy directly from our like NPM like Java package, mm -hmm. like JavaScript package. Um, so as as far as like early developers, it's, it's easy as someone who's not a developer, uh, right? There's different incentives that maybe you're a user of one of the protocols yeah. that uh, uses Witnet and you need to know, okay, I trust in this protocol because I know their data secure because they're using Witnet, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, nice. And, and I support this protocol and I wanna support the underlying protocols they rely on. Right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, it's important, right? Like I always like to ask that because this you know this whole push right of of bringing blockchain and everything more to the light for others who are not really you know that knowledgeable of it how easy can it be to be understood right right yeah yeah cool so the name witnet where, where does this originate from yeah that's interesting uh so it's actually the witness network oh okay yeah. all right all right yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right so uh, i was trying to think what could it be you know yeah, yeah. so uh we have witnesses that go out and witness an event for you uh and you say i want to at this point in time go out to these five websites and s gather some piece of data it mm -hmm. could be like the price of bitcoin the price of gold or maybe um or some real world assets or like there's a, a different a bunch of different things right yeah um so uh, we need someone to go out and witness that event. And so it's like the witness network is kind of like okay. where that came, comes from. <laughs> All right, nice, nice, nice. And if we were to pick like a timeline for the future, right? A roadmap for WitNet, where do you see you guys in three years?
Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, so right now we're at this pivotal point where we're launching WIT2 or switching our consensus mechanism. In the past few years, we've had proof of random eligibility. Since we run our own layer one, it, we've had our own consensus mechanism, but to uh, better align like minor incentives and to have like more clear incentives, mm -hmm. we're switching to proof of stake, which is happening like as we speak. Um, that should be, uh, as we transition to that, we also have our halving early. Um, initially, when you read the WITNET white paper, uh, and the initial uh, protocol that we had a happening scheduled for October 2025. Uh, that's happening sooner. Uh, that's probably in a couple of weeks when we reach the minimum threshold to activate WIT2. Um, after that, uh, you said the next three years, right? So we have um, more integrations. Uh, we've been very aggressive on adopting and integrating on new chains, new EVMs. Uh, like I said, 28 EVM chains that we're live on. Um, yeah, and you talk to some people they can't even name like 28 different EVM chains, right? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but, but not all, all of them are gonna make it, right? And it's interesting to see like how the L2, L1 scenario plays out. Like maybe is the L2, is that the way to go? Um, Yes, I think multi-chain was like the right approach. Like we're still going to be multi-chain. Like if there's a new chain or a roll up or ZK EVM or something like that, uh, it's easy enough for us to deploy there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but yeah, it's just interesting to see how the landscape will evolve. I think uh, how WitNet will evolve in that time. We also have 2.1, which is going to come in the next couple of months, uh, which adds new features like uh, True delegated proof of stake and some other like features around that. More features like with data requests and different things. Uh, but yeah, in the next three years, it's kind of hard to say. I would imagine that uh, as more blocks are mined, more wit would be staked. Uh, circulating supply would maybe grow. Right, because there's still a mission within yeah. uh, blocks and different things. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 it's interesting to think about uh, yeah. that far ahead. Uh, yeah, but, and you know, sometimes <clears throat> you, don't, you, know, you want to think uh, uh, far ahead, but also we need to think about now as well. Sure. Especially in this ever evolution, you know, like that we have going on, right? Like every day, you know, you got to right. stay on your toes in the space, <laughs> really, like it is. And so with that, like how do you guys as a team, right? There's hurdles. There always is. Nothing is ever perfect, right? Uh, in yeah, terms of, of the process, you know, how do you guys maintain like, you know, to, to have success leaping over these hurdles? Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I'd say like partly is having such a small team. I think the, the core team uh, is maybe seven or eight people, mm -hmm. right? But one of the interesting things to note is WitNet is an open source project. Mm -hmm. And we even have like a non-developers contributing to GitHub. So it's really like a community project, okay. uh, more so. Uh, and the small core team that we have, we're like highly dynamic and can be adaptable. Mm -hmm. and, that type of thing right i mean i'll t i mean i'll say it myself i've you know been able to communicate with you guys a little bit and you guys have been great so i can see how you know, yeah, yeah. That, whole, <laughs> you know that camaraderie of a, a small team like that is functionable yeah and and, and and just the flexibility uh it's great that you uh were able to have that that moment with uh, the yeah. team, uh, team member in barcelona and absolutely like, yeah meet up real quick and just get the job done yeah yeah no it was great it was great cool now for any insight for people looking in into this space right that maybe want to attend an event like eth denver what would you tell them yeah that uh in the next couple of years uh, i'm sorry within 2025 our conference lineup uh we have several different things on on the books uh obviously if denver uh ETH cc i think this year it's happening in cons uh, ETH cc has always been like a big part of witnet um like uh, ever since witnet started we've always been at ETH cc right? yeah did you, did you go to ETH cc last year in brussels some of the team members were there. I was not there personally, yeah. Uh, yeah. but yeah, WitNet was there for sure. Um, this year, I think we're going to Token 2049 in Dubai. Oh yeah, and um, the Futurist Conference in uh, Canada in Miami. Yep, 
and yeah, th there's like a different uh, handful that we're going to. Mm -hmm. So uh, oh, we're gonna have a good time. Nice. We'll be at all those. Oh yeah. Nice. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice man. Nice. Well, where can we follow you guys? Yeah, uh, follow us on Twitter or X, I guess. Uh, it's just Witnet underscore IO. Cool, cool. And also, shout out to these guys. Fantastic team. One of our sponsors. And uh, just it was great, Marcus. Thank you so much for coming. And yeah, uh, yeah. I look forward to speaking more. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, David. Brought to you by Hedera and Foresight Ventures. Hey, what's up? If you want to survive, you got to build a house. you tell me not understand? Three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, the back of the Gen Z Media House. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us today.